knocked out by yep. Jake Beckett and recovered by Arkansas. Yes, who? Get to Jake Beckett. And that's Beckett. Jake Beckett. Jake Beckett, the captain of the defense. Jake Beckett with the sack. Here comes Beckett. Down goes Shaw. The ball is out. Hey, this is former Razorback Jake Beckett, and you're listening to the Morning Rush. As we kick off our number three, we're welcoming in one of the best defensive players Arkansas has had in the last decade or so, and that is Jake Beckett, as you heard, is open. Jake, I know you're really busy with things nowadays, so I appreciate you making some time for us this morning. I think when you were on campus and on this football team, and it, it kind of is attributed to y'all's success on the field, there was a sense of pride in this state with its football program. Have you kind of felt that? once again with what Stan Pittman is establishing up there in Fayetteville, Arkansas? That that resurgence of, of pride in the program and, and just overall excitement. I, I mean, he's when, when he was hired, when Coach Pittman was hired, I, I said, look, the, the most important thing in his first couple of years is not really wins and losses. It's changing the culture of that locker room and changing the overall direction of the program. And he, he's accomplished that thus far. I mean, he's really brought in a lot of players and coaches who have bought into his system. They, they refuse to accept losing, um, you know, which, which sounds, uh, you know, that sounds like something that's you know, fundamental for a, a football team to do. But, you know, we saw over the course of really the last 10 years, um, you know, the, the, the players and coaches in many cases had accepted losing. But he, he eradicated that. He changed the culture. He's got things on the right track. And, of course, the results have followed. Jake, I wonder the just kind of the perspective. I, mean, I don't know, again, you're very busy. You haven't had time to te- keep up with every Arkansas news. But Kendall Bryles reportedly turned down the Miami offensive coordinator position and is coming back to Arkansas. And I think early 2000s, he's out the door. He's taking that U job, 80s, 90s. But this is different. And I think it also speaks to what Arkansas is doing under Sam Pittman, as you heard him talking with Tara Talman to the Tara Talman to the Pig Trail Nation just about what it's like to work with Sam Pittman. You've worked with a lot of different people over the years. How important is just the likability aspect and the relationship part that Sam Pittman has built in, not only with his staff, but his players as well? Well, I, I think Coach Brown's decision, that speaks volumes uh, about what Coach Pittman is building and really the attractiveness of being at Arkansas right now. I mean, I, I kind of saw the same thing um, for, for several years in New England with the Patriots. You know, we had a lot of very talented uh, coordinators and assistant coaches, many of whom have gone on to, to be head coaches. But, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of those coordinators and top coaches, they would turn down head coaching jobs year after year just because they wanted to, they wanted to stay in New England. They wanted to be around Coach Belichick. They want to continue to perfect their craft and be around the championship program and just wait for the right opportunity. And that's, you know, Coach Bryles, you know, he, he, he turned down that job because he figured, hey, Arkansas is the place to be. It's the place to continue to develop. The future is bright. And I'll have other opportunities either here or, or somewhere else down the line. But, you know, I, I just think that decision speaks volumes about his confidence in Arkansas. You know, and just his overall, um, you know, optimism about the direction of the program. You know, Ty asked you about, you know, the start with Sam Pittman and this culture here. You were, in, you know, involved in Bobby Petrino's system, Bill Belichick. You were an Army Ranger. What's, what's the number one thing, or what's the most important ingredient in your mind in, a, in establishing and, and building, or maybe reestablishing in Arkansas's cases, uh, the right culture for winning? You, you've been in a lot of situations. What's, what's the first thing the leaders got to do? Well, step one is not always pleasant, um, but I, I've observed it in football. I've observed it in the military. It's it's kind of like the first week of Ranger School, where you know that's where most of the people quit. You know, it, it, it's, that's where they try to get rid of everyone um, you know who doesn't really want to be there. Uh, you know, who, who might not have what it takes physically, mentally, emotionally to complete the training. And it's the same thing in you know it's kind of the beginning of a. Uh, of a new head coaching tenure, at least one who's trying to establish a really tough culture. And I, I saw that in, in 2008 with Coach Petrino. You know, that, that first offseason was, was legendary. Um, but he, he really set the tone, uh, you know, for the, the organizational culture that he wanted, um, that his coaching staff wanted. 
and you know the the core of guys who were who were left. Um, you know, we're, we were pretty young and inexperienced there in 2008, but you know, we we started something and we knew we were building something, and the future was bright. I think that's exactly what Coach Pittman did, and you know, right now we're we're starting to see, you know, just kind of like it in 2009, 2010, you know, under Coach Petrino during my tenure, um, you know, we're we're starting to see those results here, um, you know, with a really solid nine win season. But you know, look, it's it, it's all about what have you done for me lately. Um, you know, I, I know they're not they're not resting on their laurels. They've got to keep building, keep recruiting, keep developing. Um, but I'm, I'm confident they'll do so. Yeah, and, and and you mentioned you know the season they have with nine wins. Can can we trust those results to be a little more consistent based on that change in culture, based on the accountability, based on the inputs you've seen? Uh, how much do you trust the consistency of this program moving forward? I, I think so. Um, I think that trust is there because you know he's. He's built his football team, you know, starting from the the, the ground up, the, the trenches out, if you will. You know, he's he came in, and you know, you, you're you're always going to have consistent football teams if, if you can block tackle, stop the run, and you know, you can you can compete physically within your conference. And we, we've we've proven consistently under Chris Pippen that we can do that. You know, when you when you, when you start your team with that foundation. You're, you're always going to have the, the personnel to win. You're going to be in pretty much every game as we were in pretty much every game this year. Um, so the, the margins are razor thin, especially in the SEC, especially in the SEC West. It's not going to get any easier, but, you know, he's he's built the organizational culture. He's got his players in there. I think he's built the team on the right foundation, and, you know, we're just going to keep improving going forward. Jake Beckett, former Razorback, with us here on the Morning Rush. Jake, in 2011, you guys had a couple offensive injuries. I think about Greg Childs. I think about uh, Niall Davis. And, and you guys still rallied around and and brought home the Cotton Bowl. And I, I, I can always picture you, I think it was, and a couple of your teammates, maybe it's Bray Cook and someone else, holding that Cotton Bowl trophy. I'm seeing you talk with... Brian Davis, I think, following that broadcast about how how much fun that was. How do you, in a situation like the baseball team, for example, they lose their Friday night guy, Payne Paulette, he's out for the season, Tommy John surgery. When you have injuries, when you have crucial guys go down, how do you rally the troops? How do you kind of galvanize in a team when a situation like that presents itself? Well, it it starts with leadership. And, you know, we were were very fortunate to have – really strong leadership on that team in 2011, you know, after losing two of our top offensive players, you know, we were, we were able to, to keep marching forward and moving on. And that's, that's, that's a part of the nature of being on a football team. You're going to have injuries, um, you know, but it's, I think it's a testament to, to the depth of, you know, of a football team when they're able to, you know, it's just stay next man up and, and keep going forward. I mean, that's, that's really what separates the, the good teams from the great is depth, especially in the SEC. It affects everyone. I mean, look at Alabama in this championship game. You know, they were they lost a couple of their top receivers, and it really affected their ability to perform there. Uh, you know, in the national championship game. So even you know, it, it affects even the top teams in the country. So you've got to have you've got to have the depth in the program. You, you, you can't just be one deep across the board. But you know, I, I think that's the that's the sign of a maturing team, a maturing program. It's a sign of um, you know a, a, a lot of optimism for the future is, you know, great leaders who were able to move on, who were able to rally the troops after, you know, a couple of key, guy, key guys go down and who were just able to say, you know, hey, next man up, we're, we're, we're going to rally around you, we're going we're to mentor you, we're going to get you into our system. And, you know, that's, that, that's what I like to see. And, you know, I, I, I think the, the foundation has been laid among this program for, you know, hey, they've, they've got the guys, you know, we, we can always, you know, bring in a few more. Um, but I think the the leadership is there, you know, the experience is there, and you know, I, I'm excited to see what they'll do in the years ahead. Jake, I talk with a number of business owners and managers that are a lot more business savvy than myself, and they always tell me their best years are, are coming off the heels or, or in the midst of a great Arkansas football season. And you were a part of two of those. You've seen a couple of those prior to you getting to campus. Just what kind of impact do you think this past calendar year, and I know we're still in the midst of COVID and some other things, but what kind of impact do you think not only this football, but this baseball team being number one, the basketball team, the Elite Eight, how does that affect Arkansas, man? 
Well, it, it has a tremendous impact on the state, uh, just as you as you said, uh, not just in the sports world, but just the, just the overall mood and, and morale, and you know, even you know, even some of the. Uh, you know, economic indicators have been strong. I mean, I, I, I read a there was a, a great history of the Arkansas football program written by the the late great Orville Henry, and he he said essentially his quote was, you know, the, the best Razorback football coaches realized that it wasn't about wins and losses; the honor of the state was at stake. And I, I think that's true. You know, when you know when people in this in this state, you know, we you know we 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 walk a little taller, have a lot more pride when Razorback football and Razorback athletics is where it's supposed to be, um, you know, and that's you know we're supposed to be competing for SEC West titles, SEC conference championships. We should be in the mix, you know, when talking about who's you know who are the top ten teams in the country. That's that's where we deserve to be. That's where we belong. That's where historically this program has been. And when we get back there, especially after a long drought like we've had, it gives us all a sense of pride, a, a, a sense of honor, and you know, I just it's exciting to be you know, here in the state and see people have a smile on their face and, you know, just see some of the economic advantages too. Jake Beckett with us here in the morning rush. Uh, Jake is a former player. What, what's your, um, what's your thoughts on this kind of the state of the sport right now with, with the transfer portal, with name image likeness now becoming more prevalent uh, in the game uh, as a former player, what, what do you think about kind of the, uh, some of the new rules and the new way of doing business in college football these days? You know, it, it, it's very interesting. I, I've talked, uh, you know, I've been traveling the state a lot recently, um, you know, on the campaign trail. I've seen, I, I've met with a lot of high school football coaches and, and, and college coaches as well, but it's very interesting to hear from high school football coaches in particular just how, how things have changed rapidly. You know, I, I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's been fascinating to see this development. It's not something, it's not an opportunity that I had as a student athlete, you know, 10, 12 years ago. Uh, you know, I, I'm certainly not opposed to you know anyone who's 18 years or older, you know, achieving their their fair market value in the marketplace, and that's that's America. But I do think we've we opened Pandora's box perhaps too quickly, and we're we weren't able to react and deal with the you know the downstream consequences, you know, with with the, the rapid changes in the transfer portal and the NIL stuff. So you know, it's it's something that's going to have to be sorted out quickly, um, or else the I think college football as we know it may. You know, maybe maybe they have to change to adjust. It's a it's a popular thing. I, you know, there's there's you, you don't meet really anyone who's upset with the status quo of college football. But um, you know, it, it, it's going to be fascinating to see how this develops. But the the impact really on the on the high school game. You know, you, you see a lot of you know high school coaches who were who were advising players who you know previously may have had the opportunity. Um, you know, to sign a letter of intent to go play at a four year school. They're they're now kind of being they're advising their players to. You know, go you know, go to a two-year school. Uh, you know, essentially uh, prepare themselves for a couple of years for the transfer portal, which is just not you know that that's, that was just not you know anywhere on the radar when I was going through the pipeline. But you think about the transfer portal and where Arkansas would have been with its defense this year if you hadn't had those three transfers that came in and made a huge impact on that defensive line. So I mean, where where the portal taketh away, it is also given to the program as well. So. I think, it, you know, it's interesting to watch how coaches can rebuild the two deep pretty quickly uh, using that portal as well. Well, yeah, I, I think the smartest coaches, you know, they're, they're not going to wring their hands about the good old days or, you know, how quickly things have changed. They're going to adjust. They're going to innovate. They're not going to worry about, you know, whether, you know, things are exactly to their liking. You know, they're going to move forward and they're going to figure out how to use the system to their advantage. And, you know, we, we've certainly seen – um, you know, Arkansas utilize the, the new system to our advantage. You, you've seen other programs do it as well. Um, but yeah, it, it is pretty interesting to see that. And you know, it's you know, I, you know, my cousin just finished his college football career. He he used the transfer portal twice. You know, with with all the you know the 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 COVID um, you know eligibility issues. I mean, it's just it's been kind of a cluster over the past couple of years. But you know, hopefully it'll it'll you know we'll see some equilibrium. But really, I mean, I, I'm kind of interested in and what's best for Arkansas and, you know, how we can get the best players into our program no matter what. Uh, Jake, you've been on this program and, and visited with us several times over the years, and I know you're you're still very close friends with your former teammate and our, our friend Tyler Wilson, and he used to always talk about how he'd get the best of you in these summer golf battles and haven't talked to him in a while. Who won the summer golf battles between you, you and Tyler this year? 
You know, Tyler's been he's been lying about you know that for 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 over a decade now. I don't know how that fake news got out there, but it's yeah. just it's taken hold and it's, it's got a life of its own. He's he's never beaten me in the game of golf. I think that he, he was probably. He was probably joking that when he said the, that. That's not the way he it. laid it out, really, you know. Yeah, he, he was he was probably joking and someone took it seriously, but you know, that's he can you know, he can meet me anytime, any place, and we can settle it once and for all. All right, we'll take you and lay the strokes next time. Rather than the points, we'll lay the strokes on the on the next uh, bet on the golf game. Well, uh best of luck and let's catch up again soon. Sounds great, guys. Thanks for having me on. All right. Appreciate uh, Jake Beckett joining us this morning. Bet Online would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. New year and a new updated desktop and mobile wagering to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE to get started. That's B L E A V. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts.